Okay, so we're going to see about 15 pounds of flour into an eight minute sack, eight pound sack. But you guys can, we're all seeing the signs everywhere. Um, literally, it's the headlines every single day. This is from a stack from the BTC uh, website. And the, the irony of this, and you, know, you can put it in your salesperson or your marketer, your HR professional, and we'll give you a probability of your job being uh, uh, supplanted by automation. So this is great, because it's like now a robot will sell you probably a robot doing your job. So welcome to 2018. So I'm with the Center for the Future of Work and Cognizant Technology Solutions. Um, you know, despite everything you see on CNN and headlines, you know, BBC, uh, etc., make no mistake, AI is the greatest story of our time. And it's generating a lot of mixed emotions. On the one hand, it's super exciting, technological wonder, we're in the heart of Silicon Valley right now, it's super cool. But on the other hand, it's a lot of fear, right? You guys have been helpful. Right? What's to do with the corporate structure? You know, at the end of the day, is it a capitalist dream or is it a labor nightmare? Uh, so that's what we're going to talk a little bit about. Um, it is funny though, with the passage of time, before I came to Cognizant five years ago, I was an analyst at Gartner. I was actually the managing vice president of research for HR services for a long time. And it's interesting, 15 years ago, I was an analyst at Gartner, who could have imagined the following help one would have today? Uh, but you know, if I told you back then that you know the social media manager would be the most in-demand role in the modern marketing function, you would have looked at me like I was nuts. But yet again, here we are in the year 2018. In fact, we wrote a book about this. I don't know if any of you saw this last year. It was called What to Do When Machines Do Everything. And the title of the book uh, is, in fact, a question. You have to answer that question. What do you do when machines do everything? Uh, and so the answer to that is in our follow-up, which is 21 Jobs of the Future. In fact, uh, just a couple of weeks, we released that a year ago. Two weeks ago, we released its uh, successor, which is 21 More Jobs of the Future. <laughs> and if you want yeah, well, it's sort of a goofy title, sort of funny, but you know, if you have kids, teenagers, or loved ones, maybe even for yourself, like, what, you know, what do I do in the future of algorithms, automation, and AI? I'm not going to drain this two by two, so like Garden Garden Magic Potter, but we now have a basket of 42 jobs of the future. And in fact, um, we are now uh, hopefully going to be able to prove our hypothesis of those. We have uh, uh, just released the Cognizant Jobs of the Future Index working in partnership with Burning Glass. Effectively, it's sort of like a Dow Jones Industrial Laboratory for uh, jobs of the future. So we can test them quarterly as jobs open up and uh, map them against uh, existing jobs. So let's get to the chase. Molecules for the future of work exist around three C's. And interestingly, these three C's are all about humans. Humans. You talked about humans. Coaching, connecting, and caring skills. But something we also talked about in 21 More Jobs of the Future are the four E's of skills. What skills are eternal? Which ones are enduring? Which ones are emerging? And which ones, frankly, may require uh, an assessment that might be eroding? So let's just, I'm not going to drain all 42. But I'm going to give you a, a quick grab back. Uh, I've got five minutes. <laughs> the first one, let's talk about the AI assisted healthcare technician. All right, there's seven billion people on the planet. How do we scale uh, healthcare and health knowledge to those seven billion? Uh, for any of you who have a dad, maybe a grandpa that has had prostate cancer, any oncologist that has come up through the ranks has typically done that with a six layer Gleason test. Dr. Gleason developed that in 1962 with an end count of about, uh, give or take, 300 patients. And sort of like the tumor looks like that, well, you know, you're at stage four. Now, Google can get to a fractal level view of early uh, onset cancer detection. So I ask you, if your dad's sick with prostate cancer, you've got to choose one of these. In fact, we'll probably get to a state where oncologists, if they're not using the AI-assisted tool, may be guilty of malpractice. So again, that's where we are in 2018. The Fitness Commitment Council, this falls into the coaching uh, uh, segment. Literally, there are 300,000 deaths in the United States uh, on average due to obesity, okay? It is an epidemic in this country. You know, I don't need to tell you that. You get it, it's in the headlines every single uh, day. But we are literally waging a battle of the bulge. It's one of the biggest final battles of World War II times two every single year on those deaths. So the ability to have uh, fitness commitment counselors that may be having access to your wearable fitness device, and oh, you got into the scotch with your brother-in-law on the weekend? Okay, let's talk about it. What's happening? Are you moving? If you're not moving, why aren't you moving? Well, in California today, the air is suffused with smoke. I can't get out and move because I'll kill myself. But the idea is that each one of these 42 jobs, if, and please download these PDF reports, they are written as if they were JDs. Job descriptions from the front lines in 2028. What skills would you need? 
how would you articulate it? If you change the work process, you change the business process. And if you change the business process for your companies, you're changing business strategy. So people in this room having direct line of sight to strategy for their firms are going to be in the full position to help this come about. Let's talk about the personal memory curator uh, and the caring column. Okay, we had actually conceived of a world in the next 10 years that will be suffused with things like virtual reality and sort of uh, before onset, maybe signing an advanced memory statement uh, for pre-dementia, pre-Alzheimer's patients. Uh, you know, what was the street where you raised your children and getting them into an immersive environment where their memories are curated. But we actually went on and did some work with us <coughs> Uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico, which are like, you know, people's homes have just been blown away. There's toxic stress everywhere. You know, make no mistake, there's going to be toxic stress in Paradise, California. How do you curate those treasured memories that are now digitally incepted into platforms like Facebook and could be recreated and reskinned in a 360 immersive environment? Okay, important to this audience, the algorithm bias auditor. Okay, this is coming. You can imagine, you know, there's a lot of algorithms, world suffused with algorithms. How do we make sure that there's no black boxes? You can imagine perhaps a headline like this, Dateline 2021, the European Commission and the US FTC have established the no black box consortium. Who on your staff is responsible for auditing algorithms and making sure that they are 100% ethical because they are so critical to the performance of the firm? All right, last but not least, okay, talked a little bit already, the augmented reality journey builder. Uh, in fact, you're seeing it all around you. I don't know if any of you guys are Sir Elton fans. I certainly am. He announced his farewell Yellow Brick Road tour uh, on YouTube with an amazing video. If you haven't seen it and you have access to an HMV, check this thing out. It was a killer case study, how they built that thing, actually using augmented reality journey builders today. It takes a literal cast of characters to do that. When you saw this came out a couple of years ago, Pokemon Go, you might have thought, God, that's a joke. But when I was an analyst at Gardner, you know, we used to talk about cloud computing with our clients 20 years ago. They're like, well, hell, that's a joke. Take one look at the skyline of San Francisco and look at Salesforce Tower, right? It's, it's with us. It's all around us today. So you and the new machine in 39 seconds. Think about this for a moment. Okay, Americans employed in agriculture over the last 100 years, we went from 80% of people to 2% of people employed in agriculture to think that we won't have a moment of change where people are uh, moving into new jobs in the future, 42, maybe 142, maybe 1,042. Uh, and we'll probably look at something like this. We'll go from a cubicle farm environment, 60% 60, 60 of jobs to 5% of the next 50 years, the land that time forgot. So focus on specifics, guys. This is really important. Think about your JDs. Focus on the next 10 years and not the next 50. With that, thank you very much.